hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today I'm bringing you a really fun video and it's my last one on the Pixel XL before I sell it to get ready for the Pixel 2 coming out. And that is the 10 best new features in Android 8.0. Yes, before I am giving this one away, it had just upgraded to Android 8.0. So I wanted to take a look at the best features that you guys really care about. And so that being said, let's get started and see if there are some features you really would love to come to your next Android smartphone. Now for the first feature, you might notice that a lot of my icons look a bit different. And that's because you now have adaptive icons. So what this means is you can actually change the way all of your icons look. Eventually it will be all of them. If you actually have something like Nova Launcher, you already can do this as well. But how you do it is by holding down the home screen, going into settings, and then changing icon shape. Now you can leave the default, which is just whatever the um, manufacturer gives you, or you can change it to whatever you want. I kind of like the teardrop, it's very different from most. But you can do square, and it will change all of them to square-like styles. And you can see if it doesn't fit it, it will actually put like a white box or a gray box, depending on what the look is around it. So you can do this for any of them. So it's just a really nice different kind of look overall that you can make your icons. Uh, this one's like the galaxy style. So uh, if you're a fan of that style, that is there for you. Again, I like anything new or different, so Teardrop will be the one I'll leave it at. Now, another really cool feature is the fact that you have the ability to actually have these little notification badges. Now, if you've had iOS or something like Nova Launcher, you've had these for a long time, but now it's in stock Android. And what this is, is that if you hold it down, you see there's a dot, so there's some notification, as I can see up here as well right now, but if I hold this down, I could see that, oh, hey, Best Buy's trying to tell me about the new iPhone or anything along those lines. And you can go right to it, or you can just swipe it away, and then that notification's gone from here and from there. It's a really cool, simple, easy way to actually see your notifications and see what apps are going through in your notifications. I really wish it would have a number like Nova and iOS, but at least that's something just to always indicate, oh, I need to get to Hangouts right now, or YouTube right now, or the Play Store, or anything along those lines. So this next feature is definitely a really good one and it's probably the most talked about one I would say and that is picture in picture. See on a lot of these apps now what you can do is picture in picture. So basically minimize an app to have it always above whatever you're doing but still have it be active. What do I mean? I mean if you're doing this with like navigation or maps or something along the line of your favorite YouTube channel and you're watching a great video and all you want to do is, you know what? I'm gonna check on something else. So you hit the home button, and now you have picture in picture. And you can drag this, you can move this wherever you want it to. Uh, you can make it bigger, you can have, he you can put it on mute, you can turn off the volume, you can pause it. Really simple and easy to do. But the whole idea behind it is that you really have access to everything on here and moving it around as you see fit is a really cool feature. And overall, I just really like the ability of it. Um, now, are you gonna use this on a day-to-day -day basis? Maybe, maybe not. I could really see it useful for navigation if you need to text message someone and you still want your navigation up. Really good for those purposes. And really just a fun factor. Now, how do you find out if your app is available for that? Well, you go into settings and then you're going to go to I want to say system and then, oh no, permissions, permissions, sorry. We're gonna to go to apps and notifications, advanced, special app access, and then picture in picture. So these are the apps available for right now out of all the apps I have. Hopefully we'll see more in the future, but as of right now, these are all the apps you can do picture in picture with, which is a good start being that it's all the Google apps. Now, a really other cool feature is we got the integration of having album art uh, from Google Play Music and Spotify and YouTube. And you might've seen this in the last one, but just kind of quickly show you, 
it's a really cool feature just to be able to kind of see album art from either your uh, play, music, or your YouTube videos. Just a really nice, uh, cool kind of part. And I believe even if you have it, depending on the app, you'll once again have that big screen where you actually have the album art again, which is a throwback from, I want to say, two versions of Android again ago, where we had it and then we got rid of it. So I think it's great to have it back. I loved the look of my lock screen changing because I was playing a certain song or a certain YouTube video. Now, one of by far my favorite new features is a great alternative to do not disturb mode. And that is sometimes just one app is giving you all the notifications, but you don't want to stop your phone calls, your text messages, or something along those lines. So what you can do instead of turning do not disturb mode on and having a lot of stuff blocked out, you can actually just snooze one app from not giving you any notification. So say if your Twitter is blowing up, or your YouTube is blowing up, or your Facebook is blowing up, and you don't want to get any notifications on that, well, then you take the notification, you swipe it about halfway, and about there will be good, and then you hit this little clock, and then you can actually snooze it for a certain duration. So right now, you have 15 minutes, half an hour, one hour, and two hours, and once you do that, it will then snooze for that time, and that's all you have to do. And now it snooze for an hour. So I will not get any Amazon notifications for an hour. Really good, especially for me who does YouTube videos, I get notifications all the time while I'm doing a video, so that is one thing I'm definitely gonna be using from now on. So one of my favorite new features by far is the fact that Google took a great feature from Samsung, and that is that the notifications are a lot simpler and easier to use now. So you don't have the dark shade notifications now at the top, first of all, it is white now, but the biggest thing about it is the actual settings follow suit and looks so much more clean. So they really have followed the aspect of basically kind of categorizing things, usually about three to four things within each section. And it's just a lot easier to maintain, a lot easier to know, okay, if I wanna go connected devices, all right here. If I want to go my Wi-Fi connections right there, all things battery, all things display, just really easy to find everything. And they even have advanced stuff kind of hidden more so because not everyone's gonna to need to go over those things. So really simple and easy, and I think it's just a lot better looking than it used to be. Let me know what you guys think because I greatly prefer this settings feature and the ability to search something. So if you're not sure where something is, you can just search it right here and it comes up right away. So it's a really great ability to actually find everything right away, even something that is hidden in your developer options. So if you wanna change something a little bit more advanced, you have that ability to do so. All right, so this next feature is probably by far my favorite feature with the update. It's just really great. So if you're like me, you have some kind of program or application that autofills all of your username and password because it's really a pain to remember them all. For me, I actually use Google itself to autofill. So if I'm in my Chrome browser, everything is autofilled. For some people, they use things like LastPass or anything along those lines. Now, the really great part is, is Google is actually letting you pick which kind of program you want to use. In language and inputs, you now have something called autofill service. I personally have autofill with Google. However, you can expect things like LastPass and other apps like that to be there. So it'll autofill all your username and sign in. Now, the really great part about this is no matter where you go now, you can actually do that. So if I want to sign into Twitter from the first time on here, I can hit log in. I hold it down and then tap autofill. And then for this account, I have two different ones. So I'm going to tap this, log in, and there you go. So really simple and easy to do and really great that you don't have to remember all your passwords anymore. It just autofills it and everything. Really great and easy to use. All right, so this next feature I would say is still pretty buggy, but the idea about it is really cool. Eventually what you're supposed to be able to do is double tap any kind of address, any kind of name of, name of a company, and any kind of telephone number. And when you double tap it, 
it will actually come up with the app that you want to use. So, oh, do you want to call this number? Or, still doesn't get the address right, but uh, basically you can double tap it and maps will come up. So these are the kind of things that are really cool. And this is just supposed to be smart text select. Now it still really doesn't work with a lot of apps. I tried it on the internet browser. I tried it on Yelp, not really working with these. Uh, to be fair, Yelp actually just when you tap an address or when you tap a phone number, it just launches the app right away. But it really should just be across the board. So hopefully we'll see more of that. The idea is that when you get a text message or an email, that that is how you get to use it. Although when I got it in this message and I try to send it to myself, it's still not uh, understanding uh, that I actually want to select that. So looks like it needs a little bit of work, but I think when it does work, it will be a great feature to have. All right, so for one of the more happier, although I guess it's a little bit controversial new features, is that the new Android 8.0 has a stock style set of new emojis. So we have a lot more emojis than before, but they are a bit more stock looking, kind of like how it is on iPhones as well as on Apple. So they look a bit more generic. They're the circles, not the blobs that we had before, but I think I really like them. Uh, and again, you of course can change the skin tone, which is always nice and just the ability to have a lot of these. So you have a lot of different styles and you still have the same categorizations that we had before. By the way, if you're wondering what keyboard I'm using, this is called SwiftKey. So yeah, you have a lot of different styles that you can use and I like them more so, but let me know what you guys thoughts are in the comment section down below. Do you like these? Do you not like these? I'm kind of curious to see what the general consensus is on my channel. So this last feature was a little hard to find just because it's not available in a lot of apps yet, but you're gonna have something called instant apps. What it is, is basically a more mobile version of a website, really just that looks identical to the app. So one that we have here is going to be Jet. Now Jet basically shopping app looks exactly like the website because this is actually the website. But if I download the actual app, it looks identical to it. So the exact same layout is what the actual website now looks like. And a lot of different websites are gonna go towards this just so basically that it's an instant download without downloading it. So it's on your phone right now, but it's actually not taking up any space or storage or anything like that. As soon as you go away from it, it's not there anymore. So it's not an app that is actually installed in your phone. It's essentially temporarily installed and then removed right after you leave the page. So it's a very interesting concept and really I like it just for the fact that it makes mobile websites more mobile. All right guys, hopefully you did like this video. If you did, please give a like thumbs up down below. Thank you as always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y the YouTube tech guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.